In this video, we're going to look at the principle of three points of pressure in regards to splinting. As you've noticed from your readings, it takes three points of pressure to control movement around a joint in one direction. So let's look at a joint uh, to illustrate this concept. First thing we're going to do is just draw a metacarpal. Okay, and then draw a proximal phalanx. Okay, so we have our metacarpal, our proximal phalanx. This is volar. This is dorsal. Okay. Now, in order to look at our three points of pressure concept. We're going to look at this. So if this proximal phalanx were to come down like this, that would be flexion. If it were to come back like this, that would be extension or hyperextension. Okay. If I apply three points of pressure, I'm going to take these words off here so that I can draw in my pressure points. If I were to apply three points of pressure, let's say one here, one here, and one here, okay? Those three points of pressure, if those are immovable points of pressure, will prevent this proximal phalanx, or the metacarpal relatively, from extending, okay? With it pressure here, pressure here, and pressure here, there's no way for this proximal phalanx to come back and hyperextend at all. All right? However, with these three same points of pressure, that proximal phalanx is very happy to flex. There's nothing preventing it from flexing. So, with these three points of pressure, I can prevent extension, but it will not prevent flexion. On the other hand, if I apply three points of pressure in the opposite direction, so now I have pressure on the dorsal uh, metacarpal phalangeal joint, and pressure in the volar hand, and on the volar uh, distal aspect of the uh, proximal phalanx. Now, there's no way for this proximal phalanx to actually flex, all right? But with these three points of pressure, it can't flex at all. However, it would be very happy if the uh, palmar plate would allow it to do that. It would be very happy to hyperextend. So again, three points of pressure prevents movement in one direction, does not prevent movement in the other direction. If we want to prevent movement in both directions, we need these three points of pressure plus the other three points of pressure to totally immobilize that joint in both directions. And this is typically what you have when you're creating a splint. Um, let's say the volar aspect here, you'll actually have your splinting material. Okay, your splint that you make and that has those three points of pressure covered down there. And then to cover these three points of pressure, you'll typically have strapping. That will then apply pressure on the dorsum at those three points, thus immobilizing the joint in both directions, both flexion and extension. So just remember, three points of pressure, one, two, three, or one, two, three, one in the middle and two on the ends, um, on the other side will prevent uh, movement of a joint in one direction only. If you have the three points of pressure that pre prevent movement in the other direction as well, then you can immobilize your joint totally in your splint.